the Ghassanids, or Al Ghassasina, or Al Yafniun, was an Arabic tribal confederation united under Yafna I in the 3rd century AD, in the north of the Arabic Peninsula, around the area that is today Jordan and northern Saudi Arabia. Under the following hundreds of years, it would grow and come into closer contact with the eastern parts of the Roman Empire and Sassanid Persia. However, the Rassanids would move closer to Rome diplomatically and would reach its closest relationship under Al-Harith ibn Jabala al-Rassani of the Rassanids, who was the official ruler of the region of the third province of Palestine in the Byzantine Eastern Roman Empire after the Eastern Roman Emperor Justinian appointed him governor of the province in the 6th century AD as part of an alliance. The third province of Palestine included the south of modern day Palestine and Israel, the Sinai Peninsula, southwest Jordan and a part of northern Saudi Arabia. In return for this land, the alliance, which was the continuation of previous support between Rassanids and the Roman emperors, as they had supported the Roman emperors previously against the Persians, the alliance would ensure the security of the Roman frontier against enemies such as the Arabic Lachmid confederation, who were supported by the Persian Sassanid empire. Justinian also tried to convert the Rassanids to the Roman Orthodox Church. Al Harith, however, did not convert himself and the rest of the tribes and clans that made up the Rassanid tribal confederation to the Roman Orthodox Christianity, as they had mostly previously been Miaphysite Christian believers, who were outside of the beliefs of the Roman version of Christianity. In fact, a large portion of the Arab and Syriac speaking Miaphysite Christian communities within what is now Jordan, Israel, Palestine, Syria and Lebanon have their origins among the Rassanids and their versions of Christianity. In any case, Al-Harith and later Rassanid rulers also helped to expand the influence of the Roman Eastern Empire outside of the borders of the third province of Palestine, outside the borders of the Byzantine Empire, such as up towards the areas of Tebuk or Taimah, an area conquered and ruled by the Rassanids outside the borders of the Eastern Roman Empire, as they were a semi-independent entity from the Eastern Roman Empire, a Roman vassal state, so to say. But it's important to note that the Rassanids were pretty influential in themselves, and the Rassanids had influence both within the borders of the Eastern Roman Empire in the Levant and outside beyond in the northern Hejaz of the northern parts of the of the Arabic Peninsula. So they were strong local rulers under the umbrella of the Eastern Roman Empire. However, they weren't just strong rulers, but the Rassanids proved themselves as successful rulers of the third province of Palestine also after they had crushed the Palestinian Samaritan revolt. In Palestine, revolts by Samaritans and Jews, Samaritans being a religious group. The Rassanids were so effective in crushing these revolts that they and their Arabic supporters were given even further control of the area, making the third province of Palestine into an almost Arabic Roman province. This is very similar in how the Germanic tribes had settled and taken over provinces in the Western Roman Empire as Feudorati, which is to say as allies to Rome. This is just Arabs doing this instead of Germanic tribes and in the Middle East. Otherwise it's the same process. It should also be noted that the region outside of the Roman territory that the Rassanids also controlled was also the region controlled previously by the Nabataeans and the Qaidar, two other Arabic, or rather proto-Arabic or close to Arabic speaking kingdoms that had influence and trade within the area that were controlled by the Roman Empire. 
meaning that there did exist a strong Arabic influence upon these border regions between the Roman Empire and the Arabic Peninsula for a long time on both sides of the Roman border, before the Arabic Islamic invasions. In this area, Al Harith and the Larith Rassanids acted as guards on constant alert over the Palestine territory and in the northern Hejaz, and through it, they secured control of the last station of the trade route coming from Yemen and passing through Mecca up further north, which was under the influence of the Rassanids, allies and subjugates. The Rassanids' control over the Hijaz territory stretched as far as the outskirts of the territory of the city of Medina. Within and from Rassanid territory or gold and silver, spices from India, silk from China and slaves passed to the markets from Aksum and the Indian markets, back and forth. Speaking about slaves, among these slaves were the Samaritans and other rebels who were sold by various Rassanid rulers after their suppression of the Samaritan and Jewish revolts in Palestine, who they had crushed and deported and replaced by Rassanid supporting Arabs with the blessing of the Eastern Roman Empire. Maybe this is not the biggest and most important piece of history in itself. However, it does clarify that Arabic history was present in certain areas of the Eastern Roman Empire even before Islam, and that successful local Arab rulers and tribes had already begun replacing the people that lived in this area of Roman Palestine. Both culturally and physically, just like how the Germanic tribes had settled in the Western Roman Empire before, and like how certain Germanic groups in the Western Empire took advantage of various invasions of the Western Roman Empire by other people when they happened. So did many of these Arabic groups and tribes under the Rassanids take advantage of the Arabic Islamic invasions. According to certain sources, many of the Rassanid vassals under the Rassanid dynasty would join the Islamic Arabic invasions and ease the conquest of the territories that were held by the Rassanids and the Eastern Byzantine Roman Empire. One of the reasons for these revolts was that there existed conflicts with the Eastern Roman Empire due to religious differences in the interpretation of Christianity, as the Eastern Roman Empire had tried to force certain Rassanid groups to convert to Roman Orthodox Christianity away from their Miaphysite Christianity. Many of the Rassanid Arabs also converted to Islam and would become important in Arabic Islamic history when they supported Moavia, the first of the Umayyad caliphs in his bid to take over the caliphate. The Umayyad caliphs promised a better position for Arabs and gave them a privileged status in relation to non-Arabs within the caliphate, creating a sort of apartheid-like structure with preference to Arabs. Many Rassanid vassals and subgroups would thus have felt that these new rulers were preferable to the older Roman rulers. The Rashidun caliphs, those that were before the Umayyads, could have been different in that they could possibly have not had a strategy of giving preference to Arabs, but we don't have reliable sources on this, neither for or against it. And it is possible that this favoritism towards Arabic local tribes was a strategy to gain local support from local Arabic groups from the very beginning. Thus, many of the former Rassanid vessels and subgroups would convert to Islam. However, as I said before, some would remain as Miaphysite Christians and thus become part of later Christian communities. And some parts of the Rassanids and the Rassanid dynasty would also flee to the Anatolian Peninsula creating an influential faction there within later Byzantine Eastern Roman politics, and eventually a descendant of the Rassanids. Nikephorus I, who ruled from 802 to 
811 would ascend to power and establish a Roman Rassanid dynasty, the Nikephorian or Fusid dynasty in the 9th century. You also have famous Arabic poets who were under the patronage of the Rassanids and whose poetry would survive long after the Rassanids, such as Hassan ibn Thabit's poetry, which would influence later poetry in the Islamic Arabic world. And speak about influencing the world after the fall of the Rassanids and the arrival of the Arabic Islamic invasions. Many of the Rassanid customs and large parts of the administration would also be adopted by the Umayyads and expanded far beyond the original Rassanid borders. Thus, the Umayyads would adopt much of the Rassanid Roman Arabic customs that they had into their court system and administration. Here we can see Roman law interpreted after the Rassanid pattern and also possibly the segregationist structure that the Umayyads implemented could have come from how the Rassanid Arabs segregated themselves and had different systems for themselves in the Palestine area. Do other possible origins for the Umayyads systems of segregation do also exist. Anyway, this was the Rassanids, an Arabic Christian Roman dynasty. If you have any questions or would like to know something more about this dynasty or some other history, then please comment about it. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities. Stark will come